Hey House Call community, welcome back. We are here in season seven, and as always, we're looking to make a connection, make a health connection. You know, we talk about connecting our health dots. We talk about seeing that big picture of health and understanding how our bodies work so that we can make better health choices, make better better decisions that just help you live a healthier life. And that's what we're all about here. You know, if you're just finding us on Apple um, podcast or Stitcher or any of the platforms where you, you find your podcasting or finding us on YouTube, you know, what we talk about is the power of storytelling. And we have individuals come in and give their health stories. Then we have healthcare providers or other experts come in and give their perspectives. And this today is one of those experts that we had to have come back to the House Call community. We welcome Josh Craddock back to the House Call community. Welcome back. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be back. I'm very excited. Oh my goodness. And if you have not seen the first episode with Josh, I highly encourage you to go back and look at that episode about just move. We need to move. Our bodies need to move. And that's why we have you come back today. So to to kind of set the stage, I want us to kind of finish off that conversation we were having from before and talking about movement and then say why we had to have you come back today. So we were just talking about our bodies were made to move. And your your expertise in movement and kinesiology, and I want you to give a little bit of your background too, we'll get into that, um, is why we had you come back. So talking about movement and just in general, you know, today we're talking about occupational fitness. Occup- why, why does it matter? Yes, ma'am. So I know some people will say, well, you know, before we got to taping, you were talking about, you know, some people sit at a desk all day or, you know, like, why does that even matter? You know, and there are people that are moving and we'll get into that. Um, but let's kind of talk about generally our bodies are made to move. And so why does that matter just for even just your your regular work day? Right. So, yeah, um, that was really the key phrase from the first podcast was that our bodies were made to move. And uh, just biomechanically in terms of the way that your joints, your joint health, um, the way that your blood flows, uh, the way that your brain uh, operates effectively in the brain body connection, your balance, your coordination, um, obviously managing weight, uh, things like that. It's because our society and our culture has become so much more sedentary, mm-hmm. we're seeing a lot of issues that were not um, nearly as prevalent uh, in the past. Uh, a lot of chronic conditions and a lot of uh, uh, biomechanical issues like yeah. back pain, things yeah. like that. Not to say that back pain wasn't a problem, but huge, huge, huge issues with yeah. it nowadays. And a lot of stuff because just people are moving less, doing mm-hmm. less on an everyday basis. Uh, professions are a lot more uh, white collar, you know, it tends to be where people are striving to work towards. People are looking for that higher level job. But those higher level jobs, a lot of times require a lot of sitting. And there's a big catchphrase right now uh, in the health, wellness, fitness industry. And that is that sitting is the new smoking. And it's wow. sort of like this idea that I've never heard. You haven't that. heard that? Okay, no. yeah. So start dropping smoking. it. It's pretty. You'll sound uh, sound catchy and cool. Yes, um, I'm writing but it so down a lot now. of people are saying that, and so it's this idea that so 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 many occupations right now are having people sit. And whether, you know, answering phones or primarily working on a computer would be the main yeah, thing. Yeah. And uh, the ill effects of that um, from both a uh, health perspective, physical and mental health perspective, have really started to take a toll. Mm-hmm. On We're seeing a lot of that in the health problems that we're yes. having. Uh, and so uh, sitting as the smoking, just kind of the idea that this is a very, very, very common habit. Yes. that people aren't necessarily viewing as a problem, right? Like smoking was so common uh-huh. and people weren't saying like, well, this might be really, really, really bad for me, you know, and right. kind of just was very accepted and normal and and no one really recognized how much it was really hurting people. And now all of a sudden, the sort of now the smoking, you know, there's a big taboo on it mm-hmm. and everything and that's a whole nother topic. Yeah. But sitting is kind of becoming like that where people are just sitting in their cars, sitting at home, watching television, sitting at home, uh, you know, doing on their phones, sitting at work, on computers with their with their jobs. And no one's really taking the time to think about what issues are coming from that. And it's normal. 
if everyone you know on your block sits at work, you're not necessarily saying like, well, this is some really terrible choice. We're, we're hurting ourselves. We're slowly, you know, uh, damaging our health, Mm -hmm. maybe not like today, but over the long period of time. And so that recognition, similar to how it did with smoking, we're trying to start to build that within the industry of letting people know, get up, get up, get up and move. Um, exercise is great. And this is something that I really want to address as we progress. Exercise, structured activity, that's what exercise is, is structured physical activity okay. within your day, okay. is perfect, but it's not the only component. Hmm. Just moving, just being active, standing rather than sitting. Hmm. Fidgeting, yeah, yeah. moving, tapping yeah. your toes, right. walking to go give something to somebody rather than emailing it to them. Even simple little things like that go a long oh, way into your overall health. Love those tips. You know, um, you think about it in a household that has multi levels. Yep. If you have your phone downstairs and somebody has their phone upstairs, you're going to probably People text just them. text. Yeah, it's unbelievable, right? Yeah, instead even within of, the same house. Yes, right? Yeah, instead of saying, wait a minute, let me go. Because I remember growing up, we used to yell. Yell, right. <laughs> and my parents hated it. Right. They were just like, don't yell in the, <laughs> in the house. house. <laughs> and so you had to get up and you had to walk down the steps. We had a tri-level house. So you had to walk down to the den if you wanted to say something to daddy or give him something and then walk back upstairs to mommy. So that was that movement. Right. And I love that, just getting up to move. And we're even looking at that. I know I'm probably veering, but this just came into my head with kids, with the elementary school children, how they've taken P or reduced it or reduced activity. And our son even said from last school year, you know, when they take recess away as a punishment or something right, like right. that, don't they know that that just makes it worse? Yeah, yes, you know, ma'am. for my day that I'm going to have more energy. I'm trying to, and then I'm going to be more fidgety at the end of the day, and that's going to be worse. And he was in fourth grade, and right. he had that he epiphany recognized moment. It, yes, right. Ma'am, yeah. And so just moving, just moving. And so, Josh, we have you back here because we started thinking about this topic of occupational fitness because, you know, we have our media network and my husband's division of it is a photography division. And he was with his mentor this summer um, doing a wedding. And it was very long hours. They were in very, you know, you have to stoop, you have to stand, you have to walk very quickly, make sure you get the shot, you have to, you know, contort in certain ways, making sure. And when he came home, he was like, you know what? You need to be fit to do your job with any type of accuracy and acumen. Yes. He says, this is, he had this aha moment of just being able, he was like, my core needs to be better. My back muscles need to be better. Ding, ding, ding. Yeah, yep. he's like, my my upper quads, you know, I need, he's like, I actually need we, to work out. And we started having this conversation about working out and acting as if you're an athlete, getting ready for an event. And that's when we had this moment, we gotta have Josh back. Because your background is in fitness and helping Oh, sorry, helping athletes even yes, ma'am. to get ready. And so we said, Josh, we need you to come back and talk about this. So let's starting to talk about occupational fitness. Can you give our yeah. audience who's new to the community a little bit about your background first? Yes, ma'am. And then let's start talking about some of the specific um, different occupations and going into that conversation. Right. Cool. Yeah, yes, ma'am. So, um, yeah. So. Uh, my name is Joshua Craddock. Uh, I'm a certified personal trainer through the National Strength and Conditioning Association, NSCA. And actually, at the end of the month, I'm very excited. I've been studying. I'm taking my CSCS exam, Certified Strength and Conditioning Specialist, which is essentially the highest uh, uh, certification in the industry um, that is for specifically working and training with athletes, sports, awesome. you know, like most college strength coaches, things yes. like that, hold that cert. Um, so I'm very excited. Uh, I also am um, an ACSM health and fitness specialist. Actually, excuse me, they changed the name of that recently to certified exercise physiologist, okay. which is largely they sometimes will say it's the highest credential you can hold without an advanced degree. Gotcha. So, okay. um, you know, there's always debate around that kind of stuff. Yeah, ACSM yeah. So is American okay. College of Sports Medicine. Yeah. Um, and then yeah, I don't want to make anybody upset with that, you know. Yeah. Uh, anyways, <laughs> I know, I'm just I know, playing. I'm just playing. So um, and then. 
Uh, I have a variety of other certifications, group exercise instructor. Yeah. I'm certified in a lot of individual uh, group exercise mm-hmm. modalities, uh, psych, group cycle, um, uh, strength training, yes. circuit training, hit tra- high intensity interval training. Uh, I teach boxing. I'm a second degree black belt. I teach martial arts. Yes. Um, I, uh, in, I was talking about it last time I was here. I was in my uh, yoga teacher training. Right, so I've been teaching right. yoga for like eight years, but largely from a fitness perspective. And so... Uh, in December 2016, I actually finished my uh, RYT, Registered Yoga Teacher Program, 200 hours. Um, and so it was a, you know, not a rigorous program, but a demanding program. And you learn a lot and you learn a lot, not just from a physical health uh, perspective of yoga, like the movements, but the mental health mm. and the application of the ancient Indian science, Ayurveda, Ayurvedic science. Um, and so that's really, really, really neat. And I've been teaching a lot of yoga recently, and that's a major passion of mine. And if you go back and listen to the old episode, I talk a lot about uh, health, menif- mental benefits yes. of yoga. Yes. So go check yes. that out. Um, and I also, in May, took my um, Qigong, uh, level one Qigong instructor certification. And so um, Qigong is essentially energy healing. It's Chinese medicine. It's a form of Chinese medicine, similar to acupuncture. Acupuncture is where somebody places needles in the meridians in your body, the energy channels in your body. Qigong doesn't involve needles. It's essentially a self-healing practice, and it's based on postures and movements and ways to harness and uh, gear your energy okay. and control your energy, and it can help open blood flow and open uh, the nervous system through your body. And so there's like this Western and Eastern overlap with it. Ah. So uh, one thing that I think is cool, it's kind of weird to say, but cool about myself or whatever, yeah. is that I have... Um, a very science-driven background. Yes. I have two degrees. I have an exercise science and a sports studies degree from Towson University. So I'm very uh, well-versed in the science and the Western aspect yes. side of it. Personal training, fitness, strength training, circuit training, cardio. I'm a running coach. I do a lot of different stuff. Uh, but then also I have a lot of the mental health and the mm-hmm. more Eastern aspect, mm-hmm. the uh, energy piece and the yoga, the Qigong, um, and that sort of more general wellness meditation Meditation, yes. all that kind of stuff so um so that brings that brings it a brings nice a little balance together. together yeah yes ma'am and not a lot of people wow. have that a lot of people like just martial arts or just mm-hmm. um yoga or a massage therapist or something like that or they're just a personal trainer right so i bring uh sort of two worlds together, together and like i that. think that's pretty neat so, that is very that's um, very so neat. i'm i'm proud that i can bring that to my clients and bring that to people and i might be able to give people a little bit of a different perspective wow. than what they might normally hear I love that. And so with all of that background, it helps you to be able to have this conversation with us in yes, terms ma'am. of, okay, we we came upon this just kind of epiphanetic moment where I talk about it's application. You know, it was life. Life was happening right. and it was like, oh, this aha moment. And like I said, this conversation started unfolding and you validated what we were thinking. So let's talk about specifically maybe photographers. They'll start off with them. Photographers, videographers, with them standing, lifting equipment, all that. Talk about some of the things that they may need to think about and work on continuously, not just, you know, getting ready for a certain event. But we we know that mainly their busy time is the summer, spring for weddings, um, prom, graduations. Right. So how could they, what can they focus on right to get ready for their championship or their, right. you know, their event. I'm actually going to take a step back oh, even sure. real go quick ahead. for a second. So that's, we're going to go to that. And I love that, but let's even just apply it to everybody first, right? Cause love not it. everybody's a, photo- a wedding photographer and everybody probably, well, hopefully at least most people go to work, right? right? right, right, right. right. Uh, I'm not sure unless you won the lottery yesterday yeah, or something, yeah, right? You're yeah. probably going to work every day. So kind of going back to the initial thing that we said, and then this will also apply for them. And then we'll go back to that. So, movement in your day, right? And then treating yourself as an athlete, right? That's one of the big things that NSCA is big on is that every person is an athlete. Um, whatever it is, you know, uh, and the corporate athlete is also kind of another buzz term. Like, hey, even if you're at work and you're sitting at a desk or you work in this, you know, suit and tie mm-hmm. environment, being mm-hmm. a corporate athlete mm-hmm. and moving in your day and, and uh, finding time. So one of the big terms is NEAT, N-E-A-T, okay. and it's non-exercise activity thermogenesis. Thermogenesis is a fancy word for saying energy expenditure. Um, thermo is heat, right? And genesis, heat, genesis is yeah, being generated, not- made. So when you burn energy, you're putting off heat. So non-exercise activity. So I was kind of mentioning that earlier. So one of the biggest things that every person can do is sit 
less, okay? Two big reasons. One, caloric expenditure can go up. So there's some stuff out there, a lot of studies. NASM, National Academy of Sports Medicine, has published something where they've shown that if you just stand for two hours every day more at your desk, that you could burn 10 to 15, I think the numbers were uh, 10 to 13, I believe is what it was, 11 for females and 10 or 13 for males. But the specifics of that, whatever, all right? Some large statistically significant number, mm -hmm. right? you could burn that more in a year if you stood for two more hours a day during your five-day work week. So, you know, sit-stand desk or something like that or standing up and moving around while you're making phone calls, uh, stuff like that can go a long way. So everybody usually comes to two big things when they think about their, well, like, oh, I need to lose weight or, oh, I need to be in better shape. They think about exercise and think about diet. And obviously I'm a huge proponent of, you know, being mindful of both. Right. But if you even take it a step back and go simpler and just control simple behaviors like how much sitting you're doing in a day, you can lose more weight, your joints can be more healthy, you can feel better, your brain can be more active and alive, and you can be more effective at your job. Um, Guys, I'm taking notes. I, I mean, I'm like rigorously writing right now. <laughs> so the cool thing is, yeah, like, so, how I wanna go about this. So there's like only a finite amount of time in the day. Right. right. So there's 24 hours, you gotta sleep for, hopefully eight, right? I don't usually get that. That's one of my big downfalls. I log my sleep every day, mm -hmm. consistently um, to between six hours of sleep, seven hours of mm -hmm. sleep, and that is not enough for me. So we're all working on something, right? And I'm working on that all the time, just Love to it. kind of show that yes. um, I'm human and mm -hmm. I, don't, I have, I have mm -hmm. health wellness things that I'm working on myself as mm -hmm. well. Because I'm busy and I'm active and I'm, and I'm energized and I'm feeling good about the stuff I'm doing, and then I <clears throat> crash. And you gotta be able to get up and give again tomorrow. So whether you're giving at personal training or giving at the desk or giving as a wedding photographer, to be ready so your time is a very finite resource so rather than trying to say well i'm going to go to the gym for an extra hour right just trying to find ways to slide it into your day is an extremely effective way to do that also it makes people feel like they don't have to be so overwhelmed if you just take 10 minute bouts and add them into your day they've shown that cardiovascular uh effects uh, let me see let me start again they've shown that improved cardiovascular health can very 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 much come from 10 minutes at a time. So you don't have to do a half hour or an hour. So if you get up and walk the stairs for 10 minutes and you do that six times a day, you just add it up to an hour and you can actually see benefits to your circulatory cardiovascular system, your health, your lungs, which is incredibly awesome, I think. Uh, it makes it really simple. And so people always feel like, oh, if I get up from my desk or I take a break from my job, I'm taking time away from my job. I'm gonna theoretically get less work done. And if we look at it from a raw numbers perspective, that might actually be true. Like, oh, I'm working, 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 and then I take a 10-minute break. Well, that's 10 minutes that I didn't work, and if I do that every hour, right, then that's an hour, over an hour a day, if I work an 80-hour day, that I didn't work. But what a lot of studies are showing is that people are actually more productive, that their brains are functioning at a higher level. They're more awake. They're more alert. They're more focused. They're more present. Presence was another big thing we talked about in my previous podcast. Yes. I'm encouraging you guys to go back and watch that or listen to that. Yes. All right. Uh, anyways, and so... Um, um, they can um, actually be more focused yes. and they'll actually be more productive. They'll actually have a higher output and a better output. That's what, It's not just quantity, right? How much work did I do? It's but what was quality. the quality of the work that you did? And if you worked straight for eight hours sitting, right? I guess you probably took a lunch in there somewhere, hopefully. But um, you might not have actually put out the highest quality of work that you could have if you had taken a few breaks and moved during your day. So that's another big piece, I think, is the mental benefit of it um, and doing some simple stuff like that. So then, and then of course, exercise. And then what about work-home life balance, right? Are you burned out? Do you go home? You've got to then give to your family. You have a personal life. So if you add movement into your day or you're in better shape, right? Your mind is better. Your body is better. That connection between the two is better. And then you can work much more effectively with your work-life balance. If you're burned out from work because you have no energy, because your body's stiff, your body's in pain, you're going to come home and you're going to keep the sitting going. We mm -hmm. talked about how the less you do, the less you want to do. Mm -hmm. The more you do, the more you want to do. So when you're at work, if you're just stagnant all day, when you come home, you're probably going to want to continue to be stagnant. If right. you're at work and you're moving or you're putting some exercise in your day in between work and home or before work or during the day, then 
when you come home, you're going to be much more effective at giving to your family. And I think that's a way you can reach people a lot of times is anytime you drop family in, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. It makes people like kind of light up a little because yeah. a lot of people don't like their jobs. Let's be honest. You know, it's a lot of, <laughs> it's a lot of work to go to work. Yeah, that's right, why right. they call it work. Right. right. Okay. But, um, when people's families, you know, that, that's that kind of like touches, people, the, yeah, touches your heart, yeah, right? Yeah. And so if you can say like, hey, just by moving more, losing weight, activating your brain, activating your body, reducing pain, reducing inflammation, you can actually benefit your family more, benefit your home more, be more productive in your home activities, your outside of work activities, then I think that's big too. Huge. You touched on so many different points. Yeah. I know that, guys, you're going to need to go back. You're going to need to rewind this, take out those electronic pens and paper or the good old-fashioned, I use good old-fashioned notebook, pen, paper. Me too. Because I still write. That's right. how I remember stuff. So, if I type it or punch it in my phone, eh, it goes into cyberspace right, somewhere, right? right? I'm but writing if it, you I, write I, it, I, it, it, retain it. I love that you need to be able to give more tomorrow. Still right. give for tomorrow. And that's the same concept of making sure our cups are full, right. making sure we have something. And I talk about that, and especially to my women in the audience, in our, in our community. Women are a lot, givers a yes. lot of times. And I'm yes, like, if you keep giving and giving and giving and you never fill your cup back up, you have nothing else to give. You have nothing left. And so this is so great. Just those little points. I was, um, we were talking about just going to work, like you said, going to work. And where I am now, I do a lot of walking in between different rooms. And just being able to make sure I'm hydrated, making sure that I've eaten properly yes. that day. Huge, Like huge. you said, you know, making sure I have protein that makes sure that my brain we're works Come properly. back to that with me because okay. I have a, th a thought on that. On that. Okay, we're going to drop that down, protein. <laughs> or, sorry, just diet. nutrition. Yeah, diet. Yes, ma'am. There we go. For the corporate, for the Cor corporate. Uh, athlete. Cor just in I general. Got it. Yep, for the athlete. And um, just making sure that I do what is right for my day to go right and making sure that I'm able to give to my clients and patients that day. Because if you're, like again, that cup, making sure that you're able to give tomorrow. And like you said, we're all working on something. I love that you brought that personal, personal bent in there. We're always working on something. I like the fact that what I really want people to be able to do is is identify what you're working on and be able to rebound very quickly when you fall off the wagon, right. so to speak, and say, hey. Everything is ups and downs, right? There's no, don't even look at it as falling off the wagon. Ah, Just look at it as ebbs and, flows. High, ebbs and flows. You got it, that's it. When you don't you, want your highs to be too high. You don't want your lows to be too low. I like right? that, I like that. So now can we get a little yes, more specific? Yes, ma'am, back to it. Let's get yep. a little more specific. Perfect, so yeah, so. Like using the wedding, right, uh, or the photographer in general as an example. So we've been focusing a lot on like saying, oh, okay, sitting, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we should because that seems to be one of the health crises right now. Yeah. However, there's a lot of people whose jobs aren't sitting, right? right? A lot of people out there who are active at their professions. And one of the things that's kind of hard to believe is – sometimes those people are still overweight, right? And you're yeah, like, well, yeah, how is that possible? Yeah. Oh, I'm up on my feet all day. I talk about all the time they work at, uh, I, I have a client, she works at a veterinary office mm. and she's Ooh. a manager there Ooh. and slammed. Like yes. she's on her feet all over the place all day, um, constantly moving between, you know, uh, different uh, uh, people and places within the office, lots to manage. And she's still struggling with her weight. Um, so, Filling your cup is one big way, right? Just being ready, to, giving something to yourself will be able to then more effectively manage your health choices. So starting with that, right, is diet is really a big key, okay? If you're putting, if you're putting poor stuff in your body, garbage in your body, then your body is going to give back garbage to you. Yes, and so even if you're moving all day, but you, then you eat poorly, you're probably still not going to be effective in your job uh, as a photographer. As one of the really big ones, police, fire department, military, any kind of tactical oh, job, right? Yes. There's a large tendency for people in those professions to struggle. Yes. Nurses and doctors, yes. huge, huge, yes. huge health crises amongst those populations. And it's like these are the populations who are supposed to be giving mm -hmm. and supporting people, mm -hmm. nurses and doctors and other uh, healthcare practitioners, yes. specifically health, right? <laughs> and they're struggling with their health a lot of times too. So controlling your eating, um, and a lot of times if you don't have time to exercise, give time to preparing your food. So let's say you travel for a living. 
look up in advance where you can go to eat that's going to be a healthy choice rather than just making choices on the fly pack some healthy snacks on the yes. on the fly if you don't travel but you're working at a wedding right uh, the photographer we just keep using that example because yeah. it's mr it's, wendell's right. profession um but we could really apply that to anything let's yeah. let's think of a couple other things um construction workers yes uh yes. we said the tactical people police etc mm-hmm. um how about uh anybody who teachers are on their yes, feet a lot yes, t- yes. Uh, teaching I'm um a, yes. uh, that's that's a good right. Yeah, that's good yeah, for yeah, now. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah. We can uh, start there. We can start you, there. You know if you work or move a lot at your job or not. So, preparing and bringing stuff with you, bringing healthy food, preparing in advance. So like even if you didn't have time to exercise, if you can control your diet, your brain will again. It keeps coming back to that brain body connection mm-hmm. too. That if you're putting fatty, heavy, bloated foods in your body, your brain's going to be cloudy and give that back to you. And if you're putting healthy vegetables, fruits, energizing foods, foods that reduce inflammation, so low sugar and um, low uh, saturated fat type foods that don't really make you feel really super bloated and um, overwhelmed and mentally tired, then you're going to have a much higher chance to perform well. So that first thing is always to me is diet. You are what you eat. That's like one of those silly old slogans that we've uh-huh. had around for years and years but it really is true so if you can be mindful of that then that would be that's really big um, and then eating throughout the day you know making sure that you're energizing yourself as yes. you go yes. so that you don't have this moment where you start your day and you're at the construction site and you're working real hard and you kind of crash and you come down but that you're eating and fueling throughout mm-hmm. and that'll help en- manage your energy metabolism that your body will be constantly burning fuel and that's called the thermogenic effect of food coming back to that thermogenesis mm-hmm, word mm-hmm. that when you eat you're actually stimulating your body to burn more calories. Right. And so right. that doesn't mean I'm not giving you permission to go out and eat all that you can all the time, but just on a regular basis, putting a little fuel in the fire, right, will keep like that, that fire stoking like that. and burning the whole time. Yes. Okay? Uh, if you think about it, if you build a fire and you put 10 logs on and you ignite it and it has a big, huge flame, and then you don't put any more wood on, eventually that fire is going to go down to embers. That's right. It's going to be nothing. That's right. And then all of a sudden you've got to throw 10 more logs on, start blowing on the blowing on the fire again, getting the bellows out, and then you build it back up again. But if you put 10 logs on, build a big fire, and then the moment it starts to dwindle, you just toss one more log, uh-huh. fire stays up. Uh-huh. And every, you know, however often, you toss one more log on the fire, and the fire stays burning. This is like equivalent that. to the thermogenic yes, effect of food. Yes. So eating on a regular, eating small and lightly regularly. I like that. Um, so that's the big diet piece, yes, okay? And I yes. think that that's really, 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 really critical that that's the, really the place to start. It's just like putting the right fuel in your car. Correct. Yes, ma'am. Exactly. Yep. I mean, Same concept. We, you know, it's like you said, it's some of those Don't put water basic, in your car, right? right? Yeah. It's some of those basic things. Like you said, you are what you eat and people have heard that all their lives, but you really are. Yeah. And, you know, and you give this little um, example to people and they kind of look at you funny and you all say, well, what would you put in your car? What does your car run on? Well, gasoline. Well, would you put sugar in the right, tank? Or would you right, put water right. in it? I don't know. It's the same, right. concept. same concept. It's the exact same concept. Your body needs fuel. Your body needs water. Your body needs the right types of amino acids from proteins. It needs the right carbohydrates from the right types of sugars. It needs the right types of fats. It needs the right types of minerals, phytonutrients, so that it can function correctly. Yes, ma'am. And I am so glad that you are reiterating everything <laughs> that we have said yeah. before. And so you're you're saying, let's start with the premise of what we put in Correct. first. Correct. And, and that's then for we everybody. can go to what we put out. Right? And exactly. that's for everybody. For I everybody. love that. I love that. So keep going. Yeah. So then um, we come to the fitness or the health or the Mm -hmm. not health fitness or movement component of it specifically for people like that so if you're treating yourself like an athlete right athletes have training regimens they have training programs all right and so let's say we could pick any sport let's say it's basketball Mm -hmm. all right Mm -hmm. so basketball players let's go through a little list what things do they need well they need to have cardiovascular fitness because they got to be able to run up and down the floor and they need to have uh, good coordination and agility because they need to be able to move side to side change directions all right they need to have good hand-eye coordination so they need to be practicing things where they're uh, linking their brain to their body right that's Mm -hmm. the coordination Mm -hmm. in the hand eye Um, and then they need to be able to have power because they need to be able to move quickly explode go from standing still to moving fast right right? You need to be able to jump high, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so we could keep going with the list. And then you could choose some activities. That's what strength coaches do, as in they choose activities and workouts and programs that will make a person more effective at those things. Basketball players don't need to be working on um, 
like yeah, super lots of rotational motion, like golfers. Right? Uh-huh. Golfers would be doing lots of big, heavy rotational swinging motions. Gotcha. Basketball is going to have some because gotcha. you do move side to side, yeah, but, but it's not, not going to be your prime, primary focus. Gotcha. Golfers aren't going to need the same cardio as basketball players because uh-huh. uh-huh. golfers walk the entire way versus basketball players sprinting up and down the court. So their cardio regimen is going to be a little bit different. Yes. So the same thing can be applied to photographers or police officers or, or whatever the teachers, right? or or teachers. The construction where exactly. so everybody needs a little different Correct. regimen and so your goals are going to be what determines that and you kind of mentioned that a little bit earlier of like picking what things that you need and focusing on them so first thing would be what are you already doing right mm. some pe- most people like a certain type of exercise okay like, oh okay. most like i'm a, um, um not rhetorical i i'm a runner right so mm. i am a runner but um i kind of go back and forth like, okay. i have a love-hate relationship with running which <laughs> probably most people who run do yes. all right um but so anyways like People say, I'm a runner, and they go on these runs all day, but they don't strength train. Or people are like, I'm a weightlifter, and they don't do cardio. Or people um, never, one of the big ones is people don't stretch, right? And I'm going to really come to that. We talked, yes. I'm, you remember I said ding, yes. ding on back yes. and yes. Uh, flexibility. So we're going to come back to that one. But so people don't do a lot of stuff like that. So picking what you already do and then supplementing it and maybe changing it out for some of the other goals. Cause if you're a photographer, yeah, you need to be able to carry your equipment and you need to be able to maybe climb yeah. or uh, pick things up, move around. Uh, but you also need to be able to have cardiovascular, be able to walk, move, go up and down the stairs, be on your feet all day. So you might want to try to shift your program just a mm. little bit and identifying those goals. And that's actually one of the big things I highly recommend. Go seek out a professional, right? Um, like that's that. what our job is. People mm. Mm-hmm, people mm-hmm. in this at least good trainers and um you know things of the sort wellness um yes. uh, wellness uh, uh, uh what's the word Healthcare. facilities yeah, facilities yep. there wellness you go facilities. Um, yep, gotcha. they, they have people who specialize yes, in something of yes. catering programs towards people's individual needs so identifying that and then again most people almost everybody's going to put an identifier on flexibility yes. on range of motion on mobility okay gotcha. um and then uh the other one would be functionality right hmm. and so, so what is functionality so functionality functional fitness it's another you know kind of ding ding buzzword right now functional fitness mm-hmm. and it's used pretty liberally and you could have a debate on uh you know the legitimacy of the term but basically what it means is that if you're trying to function in your everyday life what types of things can you be doing to increase that functionality so the sports example is a really easy one. Baseball players need to hit a ball. So they need to be doing things that specifically make them spin a bat faster around in a circle, right? Basketball players need to be able to jump high. Mm-hmm. So they need to be doing exercises to specifically make them jump. So uh, people who are on their feet, mm-hmm. what do they need mm-hmm. to be doing? They need to be doing things that help them stand up and sit down correctly mm-hmm. with proper form. They need to be able to do things that are helping them walk and move correctly, walk up and down stairs, move, pick things up and put them down, put things up over your head, hold things, right? Have good balance, right? That's a really big one. If you're a photographer and you're holding a camera and you're holding it up, trying to click, right? Or something like that, like, right? Yeah. So that core strength. So core strength is one that's pretty much uh, for every person, mm-hmm. right? Especially me, like even right now. That's why I'm yeah, sitting, yeah, right? Yeah, it's yeah. like, oh, oh right, right, yeah, right, right, right. Draw my, draw my abs in, lift my yeah, heart, yeah, yeah. draw the shoulders down the back, right? So um, finding that good posture, we'll see how long this lasts. So at a given point, it'll subconsciously go away. Yeah. But um, so finding that, finding that and identifying exercises, uh, some of the really easy, quick ones are picking things up off of the ground, right? Uh, Lifting things over your head. Yes. Twisting and moving in space. Um, losing the glutes. Easy exercises like a bridge, lying on your back, lifting your butt up off the ground, right? When you sit, your glutes are turned off, but muscles are not activated. Glute, gluteus maximus, glute muscles are yes. lengthened. So what happens is, is then when it comes time to walk or to move, your butt is not firing. It sounds kind of funny no. to say, but your butt is not working. So <laughs> right. most people's tissues are nice and soft because they're sitting so much. So firing up the glutes, doing exercises like a deadlift, picking something off the floor or doing a bridge or um, squatting, things like that, help activate the glutes. When you activate the glutes, you're going to be using the strongest, largest muscle in your body. Um, and 
most people actually, strangely, aren't using it. Um, they've done a lot of stuff. They've done a lot of studies where, like runners, their glutes are firing very minimally and um, even other types of athletes. And because they go from sitting to running, sitting to running, because the glute is lengthened, not active, it's hard to get it to contract at a fast and strong rate. So they're overdoing hamstrings, overdoing low back, overdoing quads, overdoing hip flexors, tight, and then creates a lot of problems. Yes. So glute activation is a really big one. I probably would apply that for most most jobs. Wow. All right? And I'm so glad you're giving us these examples because it just I just just wrote down a little note we're going to have Rachel yes ma'am um, she's gonna come in and we're gonna do a quick little video with her to show us some of these same quick exercises Correct. that you're talking about so that people can do these things at Correct. home yes, ma'am. and be able to talk to their trainer and say hey I've gotten this information how can you help me be do better on this or right. you know capitalize on this do better and and make sure that I have this functionality right. yes, in place correct so, so functional it's really big function yeah functional fitness um, neuromotor is another kind of like linked concept mm -hmm. neuro brain yes, neurological yes. motor movement right connecting the brain to the body so Photography, we just coming back to that because it's easy and it's personal for yes. us. But you're going to be doing a lot of movement with that. You're going to be moving around, trying to get a good angle, trying to get a good shot, figuring out the right lighting, moving equipment. So there's a lot of balance, a lot of uh, coordination, a lot of uh, uh, unequal loading. Maybe you're holding one thing in one hand and a yeah. different side in another hand, et cetera, et cetera. So the brain to body connection, it's like that. Can you roll, tap your head? And, and right. I can't even rub, say it. Can you rub, rub your, your belly and tap, tap your head, head right? See. That's like a really good easy example and a lot of people actually can do that because they've been since they were six years old and can you rub your belly and tap your head but it's like can you um hold something in one hand over your head but step to the other side with your other foot ah. right something along those lines so creating those neural pathways yes. that would allow you to be able to move like that so that's one of the big things identifying your goals so a lot of times people in fitness think of two goals they think of either one uh, like how fast am I? How fast did you run your mile? Right? Mm -hmm. Or they think about how do you look? Like oh, he's got a six pack. He's in really good shape or something like that. Not that that stuff isn't cool. Aesthetics is huge, right? It's good for self confidence yeah. and it's good we for uh, right time, exactly. Yep. So how you look does play a big role in how you feel, etc. Um, and then also like how you perform is yes. big. If you're yes. an athlete and you wanted to perform well, and we talked about performing well at work, yes. that as a relative term of athlete, but realistically, if you're going in and you're just bent, let's just use an example. If all you do is run every day or you do bench press and bicep curls every day, is that really applying function to the occupational fitness? So you might have to drop some of the stuff you're doing or add stuff or just, you know, tweak your program again, go to professional, seek out that advice, but figuring out I might not necessarily have a six pack or have huge Arnold arms, but when I go to work, I'm not as tired standing on my feet all day. My knees don't hurt as much. I have better shoulder mobility. I'm able to lift things over my head at a repeated amount of times and not get injured, right? Yes. So that's yes. that's big too. And so the injury piece, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> no one likes being hurt, obviously. There's physical pain involved. But the mental piece too of like, wow, I'm down. I got injured, right? And then if it's your job, if you can't go to work and provide for your family every day, that's how you make yours and take care of yours then that's going to have a huge profound effect on your financial status, mm -hmm. on your family's life, on your mental and physical health, etc. So you want to make sure that you're safe. So let's go back to the core strength, the back thing. Yes. Number one issue in America, musculoskeletal issue, is lower back issues. Yes. Okay. And it's among, I mean, knees and arthritis and all these different things are huge. But low back is huge. And it's a lack of core strength. And a lot of it is, number one, sitting. Look, up, up. Uh, I just came yeah, back, yeah, right? Yeah, you just so, Okay, here right, we go. Right, so right. I'm working on it all the time too, right? We're all, I'm not an alien. I'm working on it. And that's part of the reason that I do a lot of this stuff. And so working on core strength, working on activating the core. Core muscles are deep muscles. They're meant to be turned on. So the example that I always give for people, what is your core, All right? Let's think of a tightrope walker, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. okay, and that person okay. is able to walk across a teeny little narrow rope, yes, right? Yes, and not yes. waver and not fall. They're not holding on to anything, so there's no external force that they're using. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Everything is coming from internally. Wow, this internal force true. being created. So whether you're walking across a tightrope or carrying a heavy camera to your side or um, getting up and sitting down multiple times a day or holding something over your head or turning and handing something to somebody or whatever it is, 
you have that internal strength potentially to keep your spine in a correct position and move properly. Um, and so because people's cores are so weak and turned off so often, right, then yeah. we have a lot of problems. Shoulders is another one, right? This internal rounding of the yes. shoulders, being at computers, driving in our cars, being on our phones. So doing things that help draw your yeah. shoulders down and back. Right. So training the backside of the body, right? Things like rows, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm, and things like reverse flies, mm -hmm, pulling back mm -hmm, and open. Mm -hmm. And then mobility exercises using the foam roller, right? Yeah. Using the tennis ball. Um, that's like a, we could, I could talk about that further because I have a lot of uh, background in um, foam myofascial release, foam rolling. Oh. So fascia is another big term right now yes. in health and wellness where the fascia is this layer of connective tissue that runs through your entire body. It connects you all the way from the tips of your toes to the tops of your head. And so if you're really, really restricted, right? Think about like a... Um, Almost like a rubber band. Our, yeah, exactly. And if it's got little knots in it and pieces where it's tight, that could actually pull from your shoulder and you could have knee pain or could pull in your lower back and you could have low back pain, knee pain, all the way down to your foot. So getting that fascia to be able to increase your mobility is huge. So let's say, oh, I'm not bench pressing as much. Coming back to our original thing of like, what are you doing and what are the goals? Well, I didn't get to bench press today. I didn't get to do my run today. But I used the foam roller and I did some mobility exercises, some shoulder rotator cuff strengthening exercises, some stuff that's going to help uh, lengthen the muscles in my legs and, uh, it, you know, fire up my calves, uh, use my glutes, uh, things like that. They might not be for beauty and they might not be for performance, but they might be for overall functionality and you might feel better and you might be able to be more effective at your job every day. And if you're more effective at your job every day, we've already talked about it, you can do all, you have so much more to gain as, from, as a person. So especially especially if your job requires physical activity. So if your job is physically active and you're not taking care of your body, what about far farmers? How do we not think about that one, right? Oh, if wow. you're a farmer, yeah, ooh, <laughs> the farmers out there are all like, yeah, yeah. right? We feed you guys yes, every day, yes. right? You don't appreciate us, right? So, um, but yeah, right? So if someone farms for a living and, and all of a sudden their backs hurt, it. And they can't do that. How are they? How are they going to feed their family? How are they going to eat? You know, here they're going to eat themselves. So, being able to take care of your body. So not just looking at it from like a, I worked out, I sweated, I burned a thousand mm. calories, I bench pressed three hundred pounds today. But I took care of the little things that matter. The functionality piece of it, really, 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 really big. Wow, Josh, I could sit here and talk to you all day. Uh, honestly, I am just so enamored. I'm so engrossed, but I'm looking at our time. And I know we have to kind of wrap, wrap things up, but we're going to have... Like I said before, we're going to have you come back. Sweet. And Love I to. know we're Excited. going to have you come back again because you touched on so many different points that we can just continue the conversation. Right, exactly. And All of those things were little, like a conversation yes, in their own right. Exactly. And continue and saying, hey, let's pull this out and let's talk about this. So I, I'm going to go back and I'm going to listen and we're going to set up um, probably like the Josh's Corner. Sweet. I'm in. That series. sounds awesome. I love I'm it. Down. And um, just move your body. Yes, Getting your body to move. Move, um, move effectively. Move, move correctly, effectively right? and correctly. No, yes. That's yeah. right. I need <laughs> to sit go. up yeah. in my chair. And so before I let you go, you know, we give our community a tip of the day. And you've given so many tips in this conversation. But if there was one thing that you could think of, um, and it doesn't necessarily have to be on the topic we're talking about right now, I usually say, or it could just be something on your heart that you would like to leave with the community this time um, before we let you go today. Yeah, actually, I thought about it. And it is. It's not directly related. I okay. maybe could drop one, but what one thing that I think is really big um, is the idea of journaling. And I mm -hmm. actually kind of like that we accidentally, inadvertently t addressed it earlier with the writing. Yeah. Right? So you could keep a journal on your phone, or but I, I like the personal yes. aspect of using a physical journal. So. Um, it really one keeps you honest and that's if you're being honest in your journal but um, if you're not being honest with yourself writing down something that only you're gonna see you have other other issues that I hope that you deal with you know um, and uh, but from from most of us right we would be honest with ourselves hopefully mm -hmm. um, and I really think that that can be extremely extremely effective so if your goal is I have wedding season coming up and I'm gonna be doing a lot of photography write that goal down yeah. and then every day write a note of what you did to help yourself with that. If you have a question that came up, am I doing this correctly? Write that question down and then mm -hmm. write down who you're going to try to write in, write us, you know, just writing and recording. Cause then maybe you forgot, you go back and like, Oh my gosh, last week I said, I wasn't sure if I was doing this exercise correctly. Or last week I said that I was going to try to start adding in more mobility work, more foam rowing, and I haven't done anything about it. So it's kind of just keeps you honest, keeps you, uh, provides evidence for the things you have or have not been doing, hopefully have. 
Um, and it really, really gives a good framework for the things that you are improving on and the things you need to continue to improve on. And I have been doing a lot of journaling myself recently. It's a tactic that I personally uh, use, uh, maybe even too obsessively sometimes, like I gotta write, write it down, right? Um, sometimes I have to bring myself yeah, yeah, back yeah, a little yeah, bit yeah. and be like, wow, like, you, if you didn't write that down, it's not the end of the world, you know, you know, but some, so anyways, but I like the journal. Um, I wrote down several goals at the beginning of the year and I have every day been recording. One of them was get more sleep. I haven't been the greatest at it, but I've been trying and I record my sleep every single day. So that was just one for me. So, um, it, whatever it is for you, uh, use that and. Uh, I think empirical evidence is big a lot of times for people, not just like, but I've been trying, but I thought I was trying, but I really, really feel like I did my best. Like, if you really wrote it down, then you have evidence of what you really did, and then you can have somebody else potentially take note of it and help you adjust it, or just you personally can adjust it on your own. So use a journal, whatever method of that you want, but um, I really think that that can go a long way in keeping you love that. I love that. And so next time, community, we'll see you back here. Have a great day. Bye now. Thanks a lot.